Now let's see the parameters of process. These are all the times which are important. Uh, so what is arrival time? So whenever any process uh, gets into the ready queue, then that is what we call it as arrival time, which means that is the time at which it is ready to be executed, right? So arrival time, you can think of it like this. The time at which a process enters the ready ready state is called arrival time. That is also called as ready queue because all the all the process are going to wait in the ready queue. And next one is burst time. Burst time means the amount of time that is required by a process that is CPU time. Okay, you please make a note of it. I'll be just uh, you know, say dictating you the amount of time that is required by a process to finish the amount of CPU time, right? Uh, so how much amount of CPU time should you dedicate to this process so that it could get finished? The problem is it would get completed. But the problem is before running a process, actually saying this time exactly is really very hard. So many of the problems are based on this burst time. Many of the scheduling methods are based on the burst time, but we cannot implement them in uh, reality. The reason is we will not have anything called as burst time before we start it. Got it? So uh, this is uh, this is a bit confusing because we are supposed to say the time required by a process before executing it, which means we are supposed to say how much time does it take uh, for, to execute a process before even executing it. So it is tricky. And next one is completion time. Completion time is nothing but um, the time at which the process finishes, the process completes execution. It is going to arrive at some time and it is going to finish at some time. Then what is happening in the middle? It can be either with the CPU, which means it can be present in the running state. See this. Now, the process is ready. The process has just entered this ready state. And now there is running state here, right? And then there is termination state here. Okay. Now, between these two, which means the time taken by a process to, you uh, know, the, the time at which the process arrives the termination state or the complete state, that finished state is called completion time. Now, if it is ready at this time, at some point, and if it is come to finishing at some point, then what is happening in the middle? There are two things that will happen. One thing is, it will spend a lot of time in the ready queue itself, right, in the ready state or it will spend some time in the uh, running you know running state how much time will it spend in the running state that depends on the burst time right therefore the entire time can be classified into two types assuming that we are not involving any io here see getting this uh, io time will complicate the things so now the assumption is that a process needs a processor needs only the cpu time under that assumption we are going to see all the problems okay so i am not going to consider anywhere that a process might need IO time. Without IO time, I'm just considering it. Okay. Now, without IO time means there is not, no way it is going to be blocked, right? So what happens? Now, mm, it started at this point and it finished at this point. Then what happened in the meanwhile is one thing is it will wait for the processor that is called waiting time and then it will execute it. I uh, know that is called burst time and then it will wait and then it will execute, right? So it, it need not happen all the time that for some time it waits, for some time it executes. That depends on the scheduling, which means is it preemptive or non-preemptive. I'm just taking a general case, which means a process might spend its time executing or it might spend its time waiting. Therefore, the difference between the arrival time and the completion time is equal to two things, isn't it? Completion time minus arrival time. See, one more thing is completion time and arrival time are points in time, okay? and uh, waiting time and burst time or durations in time, right? So when I take the difference between two points in time, then I get the duration, isn't it? So completion time minus arrival time, which means the time at which it arrived and the time at which it completed. Let us say the difference is one hour. Then what, what would have that, pro what would that uh, process have done in this one hour? It would have done two things. One is either it executes or it is waiting in the ready queue, assuming that there is no block blocking state here, right? So under that assumption, under the assumption that we have only new, ready, running and uh, termination, that is where we are doing it hmm? to, th to keep this thing, thing simple, okay? It is equal to burst time plus waiting time, right? So depending on which, you know, you can compute even the other times as well, right? Now, 
turn around time this is also called as turn around time which means the difference between the arrival time and completion time the point at which a process has arrived initially and the point at which it completed the difference is also called as turn around time turn around time okay and waiting time is nothing but out of this entire time turn around time it has executed only for some time right and the remaining time it just waited for the cpu that is called waiting time so the relationship between waiting time turn around time and burst time is you can say that waiting time equal to turn around time minus burst time which means if a process is in the uh, you know system and it is not doing anything else then obviously it is waiting right so waiting time is nothing but turn around time minus burst time it is either going to be in the burst time or in the waiting time so if i take the difference between turn around time and then burst time i get the waiting time okay and next one is response time response time is nothing but what is the first time at which the process hits the cpu which means after it uh, arrives let us say it arrived here and then it waited in the queue it is called waiting time and after that some point it is given for the uh, you know processor to get executed see when i write that it is burst time it doesn't mean that the entire burst time is over you might get confused here whenever i say that it is waiting time burst time waiting time burst time it doesn't mean that the entire burst time is over i mean to say that it executed only for some time and again it came back into the ready queue so that it can execute later in case if this entire burst time is over why will it ever wait it will directly go and terminate isn't it okay now what i'm saying is see now a process has arrived here let us say it is arrival time and this is waiting time for some time not the entire waiting time only for some duration and then it has been taken up for processing at this point right so it is the first time a process is it is getting processed a process is getting processed which means that is the first time it will ever try to interact with the user that is why it is called as response time so what is the response time so the first time at which you know a process gets scheduled minus arrival time this is the response time got it i'll show you with examples it will be clear even if you don't understand anything right now we are going to do hell a lot of problems and everything is going to be very very clear once all the problems are over okay so just go through this theory i mean don't stop watching keep watching everything will make sense by the end fine